Hey, Pat, it's great to have you here with us. Normally, I'm sitting across from, from your brother, so we're thrilled to have you with us on this uh, this very important topic that we're covering today. So um, let's get right to it. So here we are at the start of a new year, and you know, IT departments everywhere are busy you know, with whatever initiatives came out of their year-end planning. And, you know, of course, last year, if you were a, a VMware customer, you were sort of dealt a pretty interesting hand um, based on the um, the acquisition of VMware by Broadcom, which I guess closed uh, at the end of 2023. So you have kind of a, you know, a long history here with VMware and going back to your EMC Day. So um, for purposes of this discussion, why don't you just kind of go over with us what that acquisition meant um, for uh, VMware customers and and kind of uh, give us some historic perspective on it. Sure. Good Good to see you, Barbara. Thank you for having me. And I uh, apologize in advance for the downgrade because I know when, when Paul's on, you know, if everyone goes crazy. So, uh, but I, I think that, you know, Paul and also Mike, who, who runs our technical group and does podcasts with you, they wanted me to share my perspective here because I guess as the old man in the room, I'm in my 38th year in the business, right? So, uh, and having done a lot of work with VMware over the years, uh, they just wanted they just wanted my perspective. You know, it it it's funny because uh, I started with EMC in 1987. Uh, they were a small small company. Uh, VMware came into existence. I remember when they came into existence. I was running a team that sold. EMC at the time uh, in 1998 and 2000, and they had a very close relationship and partnership with, uh, you know, with EMC for years. And then in 2004, Phil was doing work in the industry with VMware and of course with EMC as a partner at that point, not as an employee. And uh, I it was there for when they purchased them. So uh, this is an interesting conversation for me because I have more than 25 years of experience with VMware our teams that I've managed or myself, we've probably sold tens of millions of dollars, if not hundred million dollars, probably approaching a hundred million dollars worth of VMware solutions. I have nothing but the utmost of respect for what VMware has done. They they literally transformed the industry yeah. and uh and have done a tremendous job. Some of my good friends have worked there over the years, run channels, run sales. So um, you know, nothing but kudos to VMware and their and their technical solution is even today. 25 plus years later, still non-parallel. Uh, you know, so all that said, it's a little bit difficult because we're here to talk today about potential options to VMware, right? When I've had so yeah. much history and so much success with them. And, you know, given, you know, 2024, uh, you know, I call it like, uh, among other things, the year of inflation, right? Um, yeah. We all know at this point that Broadcom has purchased VMware last year. Pricing for many, many clients, all but the very top tier, has increased relatively substantially, you know, 50%, even 100% plus in many instances. And, and beyond that, there's a level of uncertainty that wasn't there before, right? Broadcom is a very big organization. They have a lot of different focus points. Uh, I mean, even if you've been watching the news now, they've been doing very well from a financial stock perspective because they're positioning themselves to take on NVIDIA, right? Which is the buzzword of the, the last two years, right? They're positioning to take on NVIDIA. And what, what happens and what is happening, what our customers are seeing and coming to us to talk about is, is VMware losing the focus and predictability that maybe they've had in the past. And that remains to be seen, right? But customers do worry not only about price increases. Obviously, when you double someone's price, you get someone's attention yeah. without, without saying anything yeah. more. But there's also this uncertainty. How will support moving forward be handled? How much focus will Broadcom bring to VMware? How much um, will future features be developed? You know, will they be developing at the same rate as they have? Uh, so, you know, to be candid, again, part of the reason why I'm talking to you and not the, the better, more talented people on our team, Paul and Mike, is that I've seen a couple of times over the past 38 years 
where a company that seemed invincible lost focus and then lost dramatic market share. And I've seen very, very large market shares, greater than 50% market share, basically turn into much lower market share very quickly. The first one, I don't, I doubt very few of the people who would watch this would be familiar with because it's going back to like 1990. Mm. Uh, at that time, I was at EMC. We're competing against IBM. IBM has storage products called 3380 and then 3390, which are unbelievable systems. They're very advanced. They're really good. They're a, they're a large um, uh, jump in technology compared to their previous editions, but they weren't paying attention to a little 80 to $100 million company called DMC that incorporated things like RAID, came in at a much lower price uh, price point. And at first, IBM, they were just a little bit pompous and arrogant with their pricing. They wouldn't reduce their cost. And next thing you know, EMC wins uh, one customer, then two customers, then three customers. The rest is history. By the late 1990s, the market shares have basically reversed. EMC had 70 to 80% of the market and IBM had 20 to 30% of the market. Oh, so that's yeah. example number one. Yeah. Then flash forward another five to eight years past that, EMC is at the top of the heap. They start, they start to have pricing arrogance. By this point, I'm not really working with EMC anymore, but I'm paying attention. I'm actually working with a company called 3PAR, which is now starting oh, to take sure. market yeah. share away from EMC, similar to how they took it away from IBM. And it's even continuing today. So whereas both IBM, EMC solutions are still very, very relevant, they no longer have that 70, 80, 90% market share, right? Companies like Pure come around, HPEs, Electra, MP, et cetera, et cetera. So those are two examples of people losing focus and losing what seemed like insurmountable market share and, and market pricing. The third one is happening right now, Intel. Intel is a shell of sure. what they used to be, right? Three, four years ago, only the NVIDIA GPU gamers knew about NVIDIA. Intel, instead of moving into that market, going to where the puck was going, they kept doing the same thing over and over, keeping their prices where they were, not innovating enough. And today, I think NVIDIA has a market cap. I, I don't know exactly, so don't quote me, but I think it's 20 times Intel, 20 times. Their market cap went from being 10% 10 years ago or five years ago to 20 times Intel's market cap. So anyone who says it's not possible, I don't believe it. And quite candidly, we could, we could forget about the technical aspects because you're getting a downgrade compared to Maher and Paul, but that history... That belief is what really lets me know that Broadcom really better pay attention. Yeah, uh, yeah, so that's that. Yeah, I was going to say that's great historic perspective. Um, you know, and 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 actually, I guess starting in in, you know, going back to the fall of 2023, VMware had almost 60 percent of the market, and now. I've seen reports saying that as much as 50% of customers are looking for alternatives. So, you know, no one has a crystal ball, but kind of based, based on this, this history that you have and, and um, your perspective, which is really invaluable here, it, where do you think the market is, is going to move? I mean, how, how are things changing? How are things shaping up? Yeah, well, I think that a lot, as you mentioned, still needs to be determined. Uh, without doubt, VMware today still has the best solution. And mm -hmm. when you move into the higher end, uh, when you talk about their complex, like foundation and their their uh, their cloud, you know, environments, their multi-cloud, metro cluster, you know, the more complex higher end, they're still priced properly. If you're today a larger organization and you're purchasing their bundles and their higher end solutions, your price didn't really change that much. It's still a tremendous solution. Uh, where I think they're going to have some stress is in the lower to mid end to even the lower high end of the market. So think about the commercial to the uh, the the bottom half of the enterprise space, the Fortune one thousands, those with you know three billion dollars or more of of revenue, I think for the most part they're going to be fine, especially if they're using the higher end solution sets. But for those people who are between VMware Standard and VMware Enterprise Plus, 
uh, you, you know, I think that's where there's going to be some strain. You know, from a CPP perspective, we have, I think, uh, 250 clients, give or take. You know, we probably do business, 90% of our clients are in that space, right? In the, the mid-level of the enterprise and below space, right? Not the Fortune 1000. So we are seeing as partners, a lot of those clients coming to us and saying, listen, our pricing just doubled or more. And we have uncertainty, as I mentioned just a little bit ago around future feature sets, commitment, focus, support. What How's that going to look? Because Broadcom really hasn't given a lot of direction there yet. Yeah, We need to look at alternatives, right? So uh, we have partners, right? Microsoft, HP, who we're here to talk about, are very good partners. They have some alternatives. And, uh, you know, we owe it to the clients who are asking to show them alternatives so they can make educated decisions for themselves. Yeah. So let's just dive in right there then. You know, um, last year, HP started making, you know, some some pretty significant strategic moves um, to kind of um, to kind of go after this market. And and that included the acquisition of um uh, Morpheus data. So right. I guess it, it was late last year, December of last year, when they announced a HB VM Essentials. So why don't you um, give us a, a broad overview of, of that solution and kind of what it represents based on everything sure. we, we just outlined? Sure. As as a, an HPE Platinum partner, you know, we are part of their EPAC community. Uh, you know, their top partners in North America. Obviously, we follow closely with whatever HPE does. But even before yeah. they developed a relationship with Morpheus, Morpheus was on our company's radar. They're very, yeah. very good. They're, they're a nine-year-old company. They have thousands of private clouds out there, millions of VMs supported. Uh, they really have a nice solution. I believe that they were awarded uh, VM uh, product or solution of the, of the year at least twice. Yeah. So they they they're 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 on their eighth iteration, I believe, of, of their eighth release. Uh, so they're very established. They're very very well known, and they're out there. So when HP announced the the purchase them, and then the VM Essentials, we were thrilled, because now we have uh, a company that we feel has outstanding technology, backed by one of our best partners, if not our best partner, with a global enterprise level support infrastructure right and and now they come out with vm essentials which really you know for the again that target market that i mentioned right the the guys who aren't using the multi-cloud environments the highest level of functionality buying all the bundles from vmware now they have a real alternative uh as a result so uh we're, we're very excited about it yeah, so we have a lot of we have a great blog on this subject that goes into a lot more detail. Um, written by our our uh, CPP account executive Mike Hydanic. So um, be sure to check that out, everyone on on the website um, cppassociates.com. And um, Pat, anything else you'd like to share? It's been you know great information, uh, good perspective. Uh, sure, a couple thoughts? a couple things, a couple things actually. You know, VM VM Essentials. Uh, and they offer, I would say, they offer on its own. Think of it as Morpheus Lite. They offer in between, you know, uh, the the VMware Standard and VMware Enterprise Plus, closer to Enterprise Plus. So they offer things like live migration, storage and server, HA, storage optionality, uh, distributed virtual switch, uh, DRS. So most of the int integrated backup and snapshot, right? And guys like Mike and Paul could, could add levels to that, but the main features, right? More than standard, right around where Enterprise Plus is, maybe just a touch below, they're starting to integrate with more and more ISVs. Uh, the important thing to bear in mind is that they price the way that VMware used to, which is per server. So mm. this is really important, right? You never want to make a decision based solely on pricing, but when the price discrepancy becomes so large, you have to pay attention. And then when you add the uncertainty we talked about earlier, uh, it becomes even more compelling. So to give you a frame of reference, a typical customer of ours will have uh, 16 cores, dual socket servers, and they'll have many of them, right? That's a typical higher end commercial, lower end enterprise client. Well, uh, VMware Enterprise Plus for that customer per system 
will be $4,800, give or take. HP is charging $1,200 per mm-hmm. server, regardless. That's a 400% price differential, right? Yeah. VMware is charging 400% more with some level of uncertainty. So that's why I'm saying that they really need to pay attention to that, the people outside of the Fortune 1000 that aren't using all the the the, the high-end features and the bundles and the multi-cloud and Metro cluster, et cetera, right? All those typical clients on the other side of the equation are typical clients. It's a 400% price differential. And again, it's Morpheus proven, nine years, eight different iterations, backed by HPE, which is an 85-year-old organization. So that, sure. that's the first thing I want to, to leave people with. And that's why people are coming to us and asking us to, to discuss this. Now, to be clear, we are not saying that clients should jump right in. You should never make a decision on price alone. VMware does a tremendous job. VM Essentials is just getting out there. We recommend, even if everything seems to make sense, even if the pricing makes, even if your price went up 10x by VMware and the pricing makes sense, and even if you're really worried, and even if you don't like your rep, we're saying do not do anything crazy. Go into a test dev environment and try it. Make sure it works the way you want it to. Become familiar with it. Uh, VM Essentials has an integrated dashboard where from a single pane of glass, you can see both VM, VM Essentials, VMs and also VMware VMs, and you can manage and, and view them from both, right? Kick it around, kick the tires, figure it out. Think about whether it makes sense or not. Uh, CPP offers assessments. I, I know you know this bar from yeah, the, talking in sure. the past with us. Our infrastructure anywhere assessment is our, our the one, the gold standard for us, but we have multiple assessments. I would recommend that clients would come to us and engage us in an assessment. Let us take a look at their environment for the cost of an IT dinner, five or ten thousand dollars, which is what we charge for an assessment, versus say like a Deloitte or an Accenture that might charge fifty or eighty thousand dollars, we're charging a very reasonable amount. Getting things done within a couple of weeks, we can look at your VMware environment. We can help you to optimize your spend, even if you don't do anything other than become more efficient. We could probably save you more than the cost of your assessment by helping you to optimize, right? Uh, and then, if you want. We can help you to get involved in testing out any other solution, right? Be it VM Essentials, Microsoft Solution, whatever the case may be. We can help you to look at different alternatives. We could show you the pros and cons of each, what the different feature sets are, and get you acclimated. Uh, you know, again, going back to my history with VMware, this is difficult for me to do. But when a client who I've worked with comes to me and says, we just got a 200% price increase, help, help us to look at alternatives, we have to do it. You know, we were obligated to do right by the client and to show them what's out there and help them in any way that we can. So I would encourage anyone looking here to move slow. No one breaks their neck going 10 miles an hour, right? That's my father told me that years ago. And and trust us to help you by looking at your VMware assessment, uh, you know, your own VMware environment with an assessment, and then potentially helping you to test VM essentials. Awesome, Pat. Great information. It's great having you, everyone. Again, more information, uh, visit uh, cppassociates.com, and we'll see you next time. All right. Thank you, Barb. Thank you, everyone. Bye Bye now. 